How's it going, everyone? I'm here with Cass Anvar, one of the main members of The Expanse. Now, take me through, and there was a lengthy process of getting the season renewed. Oh, man, it tell, was painful. Tell me about it. Yeah, it was, pain, it was, it was heartbreaking. Uh, it was painful. It was demoralizing. It was tragic. There was tears. There was, um, there was cries to our, our deities and our gods. Um, but it really was sad because... Um, I mean, it's one thing if you're doing a show and it's it's had its run, mm -hmm. and it's now you're starting to repeat yourself, and it's mm -hmm. kind of like, okay, how much longer can we keep this horse going? Mm -hmm. You know, now its day is done, so we'll we'll bow out gracefully. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. It's still sad mm -hmm. because you've been doing it for years. It's another thing when you are a thoroughbred in your prime, and right. you're just hitting your stride, and you have not even achieved the zenith because the the best is yet to come mm -hmm. in terms of story, and. We just launched our season three and episode one of season three got 100% mm -hmm. on Rotten Tomatoes with yep. fans and reviewers and the reviews are coming out one after the other and literally the reviewers are euphoric, the fans are euphoric. We're like on a high mm -hmm. thinking, wow, this is an amazing season three, even better than season two. Mm -hmm. And we're just waiting, yep. waiting for season four to get renewed, you know, and uh, then it doesn't come mm -hmm. and we're kind of like shifting uncomfortably and like okay well let's wait till next week and then the show gets even better responses the next week and we're like okay ratings are going up a little bit and um, <clears throat> finally we get called into the office and our producer is telling us um, sorry we tried our best and uh, it's not coming back so this is the end of the line for the expanse and we're like yeah, okay yeah. okay uh, that's funny yeah and then he's like no no seriously we did our, and I said, well, is there anything we can do? But then, no, we tried everything, and mm -hmm. there's nothing we can do. And, and basically, mm -hmm. we walked in there <clears throat> with one thing in mind, and we walked out hugging and kissing and yeah. crying yeah. and saying goodbye and then taking souvenirs from the office because we wanted to have a little bit of... <laughs> a little like, memorabilia. Know, like our comic book or our pop dolls. Mm -hmm. And then something magical happened in that kind of 18-day period after that meeting, mm -hmm. And um, I, did, I had read the books, book four and book five, and I was like, this doesn't make sense mm -hmm. because the best story is coming. Like, this, it, this show can't end now. Not, like, if it had tanked and if people had hated it and mm -hmm. if it hadn't been getting good responses, okay. Uh, you know, I, I'll accept that. I'll humbly accept that. But we were doing everything right, and it should. And it was, the only reason it was going out was because we were a show that was on a network that was working on an old model mm -hmm. and they weren't able to generate revenue based on the old model with a show that really is designed to be binged. Mm -hmm. It's not designed to be watched live with commercials mm -hmm. because it's an epic space opera. Right. And so we were being penalized in a way for the format that mm -hmm. we were chosen. And I said, this doesn't make sense. And then, so I talked to Sci-Fi and I said, what would it take to reopen negotiations? And I talked to Alcon and I got so much information that I didn't know. And I said, if I don't know it, the fans don't know it. Mm -hmm. So I said, I, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go online and I'm going to talk to everybody and I'm going to tell them what I just learned. Mm -hmm. And maybe the, the powers that be will see fit to use this information to direct those fans and guide them into uh, a miracle. Right. And those fans were amazing. They were passionate. They were focused. They were intelligent. They were skilled. Mm -hmm. Their hashtags and their, their, um, their fundraising and their, their, mm -hmm. their um, Save the Expanse uh, initiatives were spectacular, creative. Mm -hmm. And then once they got a little bit of information from me, I kind of focused them. I got them pointed in a direction that was actually going to impact. Right. And they went like, like ballistic on it. Mm -hmm. And they bumped up our ratings double digits yeah. on the next episode. Oh, I know. I was one of those people that was binge watching that season. <laughs> yeah. And turn on your TVs and leave your TVs on. Yeah. And, like, and so all of a sudden, sci-fi was kind of like talking again. All of a sudden, Amazon, which had been out of the picture, came back in the picture again. Mm -hmm. And I don't know all of the, the, the machinations that happened in uh, behind closed doors, but it happened quick. Mm -hmm. And then we found out about it in the most miraculous way at a science convention where Jeff Bezos was a, mm -hmm. a guest of honor rece receiving an award. And he worked out some kind of miracle that day yeah. because he made an announcement that was not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. And he made it live on stage. And we were there. Yeah. It wasn't, but we weren't expecting it. And he, uh, 
he announced that the expanse had been saved the rossi was safe mm -hmm. and i think he did something during the dinner break uh, because I saw him working away on his phone mm -hmm. for about 10 minutes straight, uh, text, text, texting after he had met us and shook hands with us and said, you know, nothing's been done yet, that we're really hopeful, but he was very noncommittal. And then he got up on stage and he said, before I accept my award, I just want to talk about The Expanse, how many people know it, and the whole audience goes, woo. And then uh, he goes, and I just want you to know, like I talked to these great actors and told them an hour ago we didn't know mm -hmm. what was going to be happening, and I just got word 10 minutes ago wow. that... The Expanse has been saved. The Rossi is safe. And we all mm. just died in our seats. We all looked at each other. Tears yeah. started coming. I jumped up and cheered <laughs> and whooped and hollered. And, uh, and Jeff was just beaming. And our people were crying. It was just an amazing yeah. Cinderella experience. So what are you most looking forward to now going on to Amazon, to that platform? Oh, Amazon's going to be fun. Because, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Sci-Fi did it right. Like, mm. like. I don't know how much better we could have done a show on sci-fi. Like, it was great, and they did it great, and they were really good contributors to the quality of the show. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have some advantages on Amazon mm -hmm. uh, because we're not limited now by commercial breaks. Mm -hmm. So the writers can write differently. Mm -hmm. They don't have to write with cliffhangers every 15 minutes to support a commercial that's coming in. They don't have to write within a 47-minute time frame. Mm -hmm. They can write... You know, if they want to write a 70 minute episode, right. because that's what the story demands, they can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, or if they're doing, if they run short on time, oh well. Yeah. You know, I've seen episodes on Netflix and Amazon that uh, run a 90 minutes for a normally a one hour show yeah. just because that episode required it. Yeah. So, creatively, artistically, we have a lot more freedom. We're not going to be limited to our. Uh, adult content anymore, you know. Uh, this can be a little bit more sexy. Um, the characters don't have to worry about. We don't have to count our our swear words. Right. Uh, some of our characters, like Avicerella, are going to be let off the chain. Oh, so I, can, she, I can imagine. <laughs> she can she can be a little bit more um, reflected of how how she is in the books, mm -hmm. which fans have been chomping at the bit for. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's just going to be a lot more freedom creatively that uh, will allow us to take an already great storytelling. Uh, experience and make it even that more polished. And you mentioned the literature behind the book uh, or behind the show. Um, yeah. Do you expect it to change at all uh, going into next season? Because where we left off the last season, obviously the gates are open. I mean, imagine the floodgate. Yeah. We don't know what's on the other end. Well, this is basically the uh, solar system space equivalent of the gold rush, mm -hmm. right? Something is discovered. There's a massive wealth and resources that are completely unclaimed and available to whoever has the balls and the wherewithal and the guts and the glory to go and take it. And it's highly risky. It's very much a life and death kind of adventure. But you know what? Mm -hmm. That's what conquering the Wild West was. Yep. And a lot of people died and a lot of people became rich and a lot of people uh, planted a flag. And that's what created the West of the United States, right? Yep. So we have now got the gold rush in space. And except instead of gold, mm -hmm. we have planets. Yep. So God only knows what's going to happen when humanity is given f f the freedom to just go right. for it. And so should we expect some of the same antagonists to be up to their old ways? Or um, can we drop any hints on that? That's a good question because <coughs> the writers in the writing room, uh, I haven't got any scripts yet, so I don't know what they're doing. But they're always reconfiguring, rewriting. They're taking new characters and actually merging them into old characters, like the drummer character is a character from a book way down the line, and they brought her forward and they merged her with another bunch of characters. Season three, she was yeah. merged with a bunch of characters, so we never know what they're going to do. Uh, uh, you know, Anderson Dawes and uh, Fred Johnson, these guys are being mutated and changed to serve the story on television. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still there. We don't know how they're going to be featured. Who knows what's going to happen with Aaron Wright? I don't know. I love that character. Yeah. Um, but he's been arrested, so yeah. I don't know if they have a death penalty for uh, this level of treason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, if they do, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen with uh, Clarissa, Clarissa Mao. You know, mm -hmm. she went through a huge redemption and... Uh, she redeemed herself at the end and saved all of mm -hmm. the, the solar system, basically saved humanity. So yeah. maybe she deserves a second shot. I don't know. Well, we'll find out, I guess, in yeah. the next season. And final question, um, the science background. Yeah. Um, would you say 
uh, this show got a lot of its elements from Battlestar Galactica or Stargate Atlanta just because the way it's going, or what, what's your opinion on that? No, I think this, the science in this show, um, it comes straight from the books. Tide Frank and Daniel Abrams are huge science nerds themselves. Mm -hmm. They wanted to create an extremely realistic world that really reflected and looked like what our Earth colonization would really look like with all the mess and all the blood, sweat, and tears and all the death and all the danger that would really exist. And space is dangerous. Yep. There's no artificial gravity. There is no force fields. There's no laser beams. There's nothing, um, you know, it's like space is trying to kill you 24 hours a day, 365 right. days a year. Mm -hmm. it, the radiation, the cold, the vacuum, the, the, the time, the, the high intensity gravity, the long distances you have to travel, all of that stuff is trying to destroy you. Mm -hmm. It becomes a character. It becomes a character in, in the show, uh, and it adds to the drama of the show. So they wanted to create a TV show like that. So I don't think they were stealing anything. Maybe, they, I mean, I think, I think what you can look for in, in all three seasons, um, our, our writing room loves to throw Easter eggs mm -hmm. and um, nods and uh, homages to all sorts of very, very famous classic films, not just science fiction. And so you'll look through, uh, the show, I think they did something for uh, 2001. They put a little mm -hmm. kind of ob obelisk type thing somewhere in there. But they're always really craftily hidden. And uh, But Ty and Daniel and, and Narain all love putting little little things inside there. Uh, I'm sure there's a Battlestar thing yeah. either in there already or coming. We don't have Cylons, so we don't have to worry about that, exactly, I guess. Exactly, <laughs> right. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Cass. I Pleasure. appreciate the interview. And looking forward to season four. Everybody went over to...